Hello and welcome to this Revision Monkey video on the required practicals for the 2022 exam in AQA Biology and this is for the higher tier it's for our separate science students or you might be called triple science in your school and this is for biology paper one so the examiners have told us to focus on microscopes, osmosis and food tests. So those are the required practicals covered in this video. Do keep an eye out in the descriptions because I'll also try and get some questions for these required practicals and I'll add a link to it there and also I'll put in a link to the content for this biology paper one as well. Microscopes required practical. With the microscopes required practical you need to know how to prepare a slide and how to focus that image under a microscope at different magnifications. So first of all in the microscope you've got the bit that you look into and that is called the eyepiece. That have, often has a number on it, for example times by 10, we'll come back to that later. You've got the objective lenses here and often they have different numbers on, for example you might have times 4, 10, and 40 for example. Now to work out what magnification you're using you multiply the objective lens by the eyepiece number. For example if you looked at 4 that would be 4 times 10 which would be 40 times magnified. The 10 lens would be 10 times 10 which would be 100 times magnified and the 41 40 times 10 which is 400 times magnified. This here is the stage where you put your slide that you want to view and often on the arm here you might have one or perhaps two focusing wheels the larger one will be for the coarse focus so you can just call that a coarse focus wheel and the other one would be for smaller adjustments which is the fine focus wheel. So now I'm going to take you through the steps to carry out this required practical First of all, to prepare the slide, you need to spread the cells on the slide, add a dye, for example iodine, to stain the cells, and then add a cover slip on top, and this is just a small transparent square so that you don't get any of the dye onto your lenses. Place the slide on the stage and use the grips to keep it in place. Select first the lowest magnification objective lens to view your cells. So for example in this case we'd make sure we start off with 4 times 10 which is 40 times magnified. We use the coarse focus wheel and then the fine focus wheel to focus the image and we would then draw the image using a pencil and no shading of any of the subcellular parts. So for example if we're drawing an animal cell we might draw the cell like so with the nucleus we wouldn't shade it in but we'd make sure we labelled the bits that we saw for example the nucleus and the cell membrane. Finally then we would then change the lens to a higher magnification and refocus the image. As an extension to this required practical you might be asked to, to do a magnification calculation for which you need to remember this equation. Magnification equals image size over real size. For example, a bacterial cell was viewed at 100 times magnification under a microscope. The width of the bacterial cell in the photograph over here is 20 millimeters. What is the real width of the bacterial cell? Give your answer in micrometers. So lots to do here. First of all, we need to work out what we've got. We've got a magnification and we've got the, the size of an, a photograph, which is an image. So this is our image size and we need to calculate our real size. So first we'd rearrange this equation. So it would be real equals image over magnification and then we put our numbers in. The real size of the bacterial cell will equal 20 divided by 100. And this will give our answer in millimetres. So our answer is 0 0.2 millimetres. Now we need to change our answer to micrometres 
and to do that we times by a thousand so our final answer would be 200 micrometers. Osmosis required practical. So let's start by reminding ourselves of the definition of osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water from a dilute solution to a concentrated solution through a partially permeable membrane. Now you may well know a definition that talks about the water moving from where there is a high concentration of water to where there is a low concentration of water. And it means the same thing. A solution with a high concentration of water is called a dilute solution and a solution with a low concentration of water is called a concentrated solution. But um, you're more likely to see the words dilute solution and concentrated solution in an exam. So we're talking about the movement of water and we're talking about the movement of water in and out of pieces of vegetable. Now this could be any vegetable, for example potato or carrot or beetroot, anything like that. And the vegetable itself has a natural sugar solution inside the vegetable, so sugar and water. In the experiment you will put the vegetable pieces of approximately the same size, so you will try and make the width and the length the same, but they they're naturally going to have slightly different masses and you account for that by looking at the change in mass which we'll talk about later on. You're going to put these vegetable pieces in different concentrations of sugar solution. For example here zero moles per decimeter cubed of sugar so no sugar in this one just pure water and you'll see the movement of water by osmosis from the dilute solution outside to the more concentrated solution inside. This one again a little bit of sugar in here so you might see the movement of water inside from a more dilute solution outside to the more concentrated solution inside. And this one here at the high concentrations you may well see the opposite whereby the concentration of sugar solution inside the vegetable is more dilute which means the water will move out of the vegetable. Now in terms of mass change, if we measured the mass of the vegetable before and after, because this gained water you would see a mass increase, and the same for this one, and because this one lost water you would see a mass decrease. So if I take you through the main steps of the practical now, you cut vegetable pieces into approximately the same size and shape, Using a balance, weigh each vegetable piece and record this in a table. Add one vegetable piece into, I've just suggested here, 200 mils. It doesn't matter too much as long as you keep that as a control variable of 0 moles per decimeter cube sugar solution. Another vegetable piece into 0 0.5 moles per decimeter cube sugar solution and another into 200 mils of one mole per decimeters cubed sugar solution. Now again these solutions you can change if you are asked to write it from scratch in the exam you don't have to stick to these exact ones. Leave the solution um, and, and the vegetables for 24 hours and then you're going to remove each vegetable piece, pat the outside of it dry with a piece of, paper, piece of tissue paper or a kitchen roll just so that any water on the outside doesn't affect the mass when you're weighing it and then re-weigh it using a balance. So if here you've measured the um, mass before and here you've measured the mass after we can calculate whether it's got an increase in mass or a decrease in mass. And then we'll use those values to calculate the percentage change in mass for each vegetable piece. So you might get results that look a little bit like this. So we've got our different concentrations of sugar solutions here. The mass of the potato, if we use a potato for example, before. Now these are ever so slightly different. We've tried to get the size the same but they are a, a gram or so out of each other. The mass of the potato after the 24 hours and then we've calculated a percentage change in mass. Now to do this you need to remember this equation. 
percentage change equals change divided by original times 100. So if I go through the first calculation for you, you'd have found the change in mass, so 15 for the first one, for this data here, 15 minus 12 will give us the change. Divide that by the original, which was 12, and multiply that by 100, and that will give us our 25% um, increase in mass. Now we know it's an increase because it's gone higher just here. Now for the final mass here, you can see a negative percentage change because the mass has actually decreased when the vegetable was put in the one molar per decimeters cubed solution. So a negative suggests a decrease and a positive suggests an increase. And then we may well be asked to plot these on a graph. So obviously you'd have your zero here and going up in times tables, you'd put your percentage change in mass. I'm not going to write the numbers on. The x-axis, just to make it nice and clear, they've put the words for it down here, the title here, sucrose concentration or sugar concentration, and that will be in moles per decimeters cubed. And again, you'd have numbers here indicating the concentrations. So you might end up plotting some data that might look a little bit like this, to which you then put a line of best fit on your graph, going through or as close to as many of the points as possible, like so. And the next important bit the graph can show us is this intersect here, where the, the line of best fit intersects the x-axis this value for sugar concentration, if you were to read it off your graph, would give you the sugar concentration inside the potato. So I will write it out here for you. This value here would give you the sugar concentration inside the vegetable that you are using. Why? Well, because at this point here, there is a zero percentage change in mass, so there's no change in mass. So what this means is if you have your potato or your vegetable inside your uh, a beaker with your sugar solution, it must mean for there to be no change in mass that the solution outside equals the sugar solution inside. So there's no net movement of water in or out of the potato, so sugar solution inside the potato or the vegetable equals the outside solution. Food tests require practical. So there's three food tests you need to be aware of. Um, in your revision guide they may talk about a test for fats as well using Sudan 3, um, however because that's quite a nasty chemical they've they've removed that as, as part of the required practical. So you shouldn't be asked on f fats, you should just be asked on carbohydrates, which split into complex carbohydrates like starch and simple carbohydrates like sugar, and then uh, protein. But first of all, you need to prepare your food sample, and you do this by crushing up your food um, in here using a pestle and mortar. And then you'd mix it with a little bit of water in a test tube or a boiling tube to make a food solution. So we could do three different tests. We could do a test for starch. So if we have our uh, food solution in here. So the test for starch is to add iodine. And if iodine um, detects starch, there will be a colour change from orange to black. So if this food sample contains starch, it would turn black. So to test for sugar, we'd put some of our food um, solution inside a test tube and we would add Benedict's solution. Benedict's solution is blue, um, but importantly we also have to put this in a water bath. So you could either heat it up and try and maintain the, te maintain the temperature or you could use an electronic water bath and it needs to be around 75 degrees C, so quite a hot uh, water bath. And a positive result, if we put our um, Benedict's 
inside, heat it up in the in the water bath, a positive result would be a change from blue to orange. Now you will, may well see in your revision guide other um, colours as well because if it's got a little bit of sugar in it might go a green colour, if it's got a lot of sugar in it might go orange or maybe even a, a brick red colour. Okay so in the exam they might talk about green, orange or or brick, brick red. But if in doubt, remember blue to orange. So to test for protein, our final food test, we would add a food sample into our test tube. And the test for protein is to add biorette solution. And that's quite a light blue solution that we add in. And that will turn to purple. Okay, it's quite a light purple, that's why I put light purple, but you still get the mark if you put um, purple in there as well. So if protein's present, you will get the colour change from blue to purple.